what we're hearing is is shocking that the the CIA was denied the help that they needed three times uh, we know that there was a drone guys that was over uh, Benghazi with a live feed of what was going on on the ground and this was in the middle of the business day in Washington so everybody at the White House CIA Pentagon everybody was watching this go down in real time do we know if the president watched this I hate to say this According to my sources, yes, he was one of those in the White House Situation Room in real time watching this. And the question becomes... Why? Questions continue to mount about Benghazi in the days leading up to the U.S. election. Of course, the big issue is the economy, but Obama's foreign policy credentials have fallen apart since that attack in Libya on September 11th, 2012. Now, claims that the CIA was denied help three times are now being denied by the CIA themselves. Here is a tweet that went out in the last couple of days. No one at any level in the CIA told anybody not to help those in need. Claims to the contrary simply aren't true. That's Jake Tapper quoting a CIA spokesperson. The folks at Breitbart.com continue to follow this story. Alex Marlowe joins us there. He is one of the many editors uh, doing yeoman's work at trying to dig to the bottom of the truth. Alex uh, where is it standing in your eyes in, in terms of where the Benghazi story is sitting? Do, are we closer to the truth now about who knew what as the attack was happening? Well, if uh, Colonel Tony Schaefer is correct, and there's no reason to doubt him, then we do know that the president was there in the Situation Room. We also know, according to CIA Director Petraeus, that he denied, uh, he denied giving the order to stand down in Benghazi. That leaves only one possible place because it's not under the Secretary of State's purview. That means that the order to stand down came directly from the White House. The White House has done nothing to deny whether or not that would be true. They're, in fact, not going on the record about anything. In, in fact, whenever they're interviewed, all they can really do is filibuster. Well, it did seem that, um, uh, that Leon Panetta was kind of admitting that something went wrong when he called it Monday morning quarterback. And he was, I guess, trying to say, don't second guesses, guys. Uh, we did what was right. Kind of admitting, when you're saying don't Monday morning quarterback, you're kind of admitting that you goofed, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is, but it, this isn't even a goof. This is a uh, unbelievable display of incompetence and cover-up. There was, we, as, as you heard from the clip before, there was a drone, if not two, in the area. There's an AC-130 gunship in the area. Uh, we had known that the uh, Ansar al-Sharia terrorist group, uh, terrorists had run the city of Benghazi. The uh, consulate in Benghazi had been attacked before. Why weren't there reinforcements? This should have been known a long time ago. Contrary to what the White House still maintains to this day, this had nothing to do with the YouTube video. We had every reason to know this attack was coming and, or, or one similar to it, and we weren't prepared. And the White House continues to dodge questions and not come clean. Now, uh, what amazes me is that Obama has not faced tough questions over this. He's in the middle of a re-election campaign. He's the president of the United States. He has a White House press pool that follows him. My understanding, though, is they don't have an awful lot of access to him to be able to ask questions, and neither do those following the campaign. And he's certainly not getting the tough questions when he goes on with Pimp with a Limp or Jay Leno or The View. But uh, I want to play a clip for you, Alex. I know you've seen this already, but... Uh, for those that haven't, a local reporter putting the tough questions to Obama, but watch, he can't answer. Here it is. Were the Americans under attack at the consulate in Benghazi, Libya, denied requests for help during that attack? And is it fair to tell Americans that what happened is under investigation and we'll all find out after the election? Well, the, the election has nothing to do with uh, four uh, brave Americans getting killed. Were they denied requests for help during the attack? You know, I guarantee you that everybody in the State Department, our military, uh, the CIA, you name it, uh, had number one priority making sure that uh, people were safe. These are our folks. Uh, and we're going to. He dodged the question, did not answer directly. Were they denied requests for help? Does that confirm it for you, Alex? Well, he, he, here's what I've been saying about it. If Benghazi was the name of a Sesame Street Muppet. Uh, President Obama wouldn't have had, wouldn't have such a tough time talking about it. He wants to make this campaign about free birth control and Big Bird. That's what he's been running on the last two weeks. And the mainstream media would be content to let him get away with it. On the big time network television Sunday shows, which guide a lot of the early week news cycle in America, only Fox News covered the Benghazi attack. As far as I know, it hasn't made the front page of the New York Times. 
By contrast, the Abu Ghraib scandal during the Bush years was front page 30 days in a row. But now we have new media. We have, we have, we have cable news, we have talk radio, but now we also have sites like Breitbart and ones like it who've been pushing this narrative, and it's been very effective. Obama's foreign policy approval rating has fallen off a cliff in recent days, and it's all because of Benghazi. But if the New York Times decides not to cover it, it no longer has the impact on American discourse the way it once did. So we're going to continue to push it, and you're going to continue to see fallout. Okay. Now, I, I really do wish that this were not a, uh, an election issue because we are talking about a horrible attack on an American consulate. Four people did die, but politics enters into it. Uh, a lot of people are turned off, especially independent voters, by what they've seen, by the president's handling of it, and that could help Mitt Romney win on November 6. Here's my question to you. If Romney wins, how does he handle this? I don't think there's a case for prosecuting President Obama and his administration for incompetence. Incompetence isn't a charge. But how does Romney, presidents, administrations don't normally uh, go after their predecessors because they don't like to set that precedent. But how does Romney let out the truth on what happened on that day? Well, it's become increasingly difficult because uh, all of the resources were taken out of Benghazi uh, after the attack, the American resources, a lot of the evidence in terms of any sort of investigation was immediately destroyed by the terrorists in the area. And so this is a question that there's always going to be looming questions unless the administration chooses to come clean. And the administration might not have a long enough tenure to even do so to, to the fullest extent possible. Uh, so the best, if Mitt Romney wins, the best advice he can give himself is to, one, try to have a sensible foreign policy. When people are asking for reinforcements, give it to them. Uh, if, there are, if there are elements that you can deploy into troubled regions, do it. And then, the, then, and then if something does go wrong, come clean right away. Don't wait for six, eight weeks to start letting the truth come out. Don't blame a YouTube video that had nothing to do with it. It's the cover-up is worse than the crime. We've known that since Nixon, and yet President Obama doesn't take that advice. All right, uh, Alex, we've got about a minute left. Uh, let's just shift gears quickly and talk pure politics uh, as opposed to the, the foreign policy disaster that took lives. Uh, the polls are shifting. They continue to shift. They're not all in Romney's favor yet. Uh, there was talk over the weekend. Romney could win the popular vote, lose uh, by the Electoral College a reverse of 2000. Where do you see it playing out? Is the momentum heading in the right direction in places like Wisconsin, Ohio, Florida, uh, and even there's talk of Minnesota and Pennsylvania that Romney can win both sides of the ledger? Yeah, I, I think the popular vote is all but locked up at this point, but the Electoral College is very much a dogfight. But the trends are still moving in Mitt Romney's directions. You will see that Rasmussen today's new poll has him up by two in Ohio. This is a major, major news break. Uh, in Minnesota, which hasn't been won by a Republican, is the last holdout of pure Democrat for 40 years. Because even when Ronald Reagan won 49 states, he lost Minnesota. Minnesota, which hasn't voted Republican in 40 years, they have Bill Clinton going out there. Joe Biden's in Pennsylvania, which was considered a lock a few months ago. Uh, and we have inside information that there's been a $1 million major ad buy in Pennsylvania by the Obama team. And this is not money just to, 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 to remind people you still exist. This is we're in a dogfight money. And so if Pennsylvania, Ohio, Minnesota are in play, uh, we know the polls are shifting in Wisconsin and Michigan, too. Then uh, Barack Obama really has a lot of work to do in the last week and a half. All right. So you think that Romney could pull it off on both sides? Yeah, I think all the trends are in that direction. And again, with the popular vote, with the polls the way they are, three, four, five percent ahead in the unbiased, non-mainstream media uh, related polls, then the, the trends are definitely moving towards uh, President Mitt Romney in 2013. All right. Alex Marlowe, editor at Breitbart.com. Thanks so much. Uh, you can read Alex at Breitbart, or of course, we'll post some links up at lilyspad.ca tonight.